what we have here in this field, uh, as I've mentioned here uh, in early October in eastern New Mexico, is it looks like there are different varieties in this same field. Something the, that the producer probably wasn't aware of, but the seed uh, source was not pure. This is a very different type of plant. It looks like, uh, it looks like a very productive plant, but you can see it's kind of yellow in color. Where over here we have another plant, uh, uh, it just has a different appearance. You can tell that it looks like maturity wise, it's not nearly as far along as this plant over on the left. Now some people wonder, it's like, well, okay, these are female plants. Now let me show you what a male plant looks like. So we've, we've talked about how in CBD production that uh, uh, a common belief is, is a nearly a zero tolerance policy for males. Uh, and you can achieve that maybe by using clones. They're very expensive. They come off a mother plant, but the, the mother plant is a, already a female plant. The, the, there's cuttings taken off of that. They can be put in a, in a growth solution and, and a, plant, a potting medium and started from clones, and then those are transplanted into a field. This particular case, this farmer here had a lot of males across the field. They tried to rogue them out, but this is a male plant. So everything that you see here in these structures, they're very light. There is no seed development in a male plant. This plant produces pollen, which if the pollen, uh, if you get pollination of a lot of these other plants in this field, then you potentially lower your CBD levels just a little bit. But uh, pull this one out. So we've got, uh, you can see we've got a tap root here uh, with roots there. It looks like a pretty good root system. One thing that's different is we haven't talked about feminized seed, but in CBD production, uh, the, the preference is that you have no male plants in the field. Industrial hemp or cannabis sativa is very interesting in that you have male plants and you have female plants. Uh, the female plants are what is desired for CBD, but if they are pollinated by the male, then you get seed production and that curtails the CBD production in the plant. And uh, so you will hear from some producers that, oh, you have to have a zero tolerance policy towards male plants in the field or even worry about a, uh, a plant, a, a, a hemp field that's maybe a mile to your southwest, say your prevailing wind, blowing pollen into the field. I don't think it's that big of, of uh, an issue, but then on the other hand, something that in AgriLife we have questions about is we do see uh, fields in Colorado that plant regular seed. 50% of the plants are male, 50% are female. There's no effort to remove the male plants. They know the CBD levels will be lower, but their seed cost was a small fraction of what it was if they were planting feminized seed uh, or even from transplants. Feminized seed is uh, seed that's harvested. My understanding is there's a type of chemical treatment that steers those plants uh, almost uh, exclusively all to producing female plants. And so that is what is often uh, planted for CBD production. Uh, feminized seed uh, through 2019, it was not uncommon to pay $1 per seed and plant maybe 1,000 to 1,500 of those seeds per acre. So. Uh, you're looking at high seeding cost, and uh, on top of that, we've learned that the genetics and the purity and the vigor of many of these seeds is not very good, and we hope that in time that will increase. So <clears throat> there, there are, appear to be a couple of different types of uh, hemp varieties in this field. This is a plant that looks like it had a little less leaf and might be advanced just a little bit further, but uh, what you notice here is, is we've kind of got like there's like little segments here. This is kind of like a, a, is, is really a, a, a collection of many flowers in one. You've got small leaves that come out of here. Uh, and, and you will notice that uh, you can get uh, a little bit of CBD from these small leaf-like structures. But uh, if you were able to zoom up in this, in, in the way that the light is shining on this, I can see there's, there's a little bit of glistening or sparkling here uh, on this. And so this would be the, the, the moist material. My, my hands are sticky. They don't slide very well. And so this is uh, some of the cannabinoid material that uh, they ex seek to extract. Yeah, I notice a little bit more glistening in here. But as we get into individual structures, you can begin to see that there is seed development in this particular plant. So again, the, the, 
the ideal for a lot of CBD production is to have no seed development so that you get more of the plant's resources going into the CBD formation rather than uh, building a seed. So I'm going to pull out one small portion of this and so now I've got, uh, it looks like there's probably the potential for about 10 or maybe 12 seeds here. And uh, I've got a couple of little leaf-like structures here. And, and by the way, for folks that farm cotton, this is a question I've had. Would harvest aids remove these small leaves there? Uh, it's just a question, but uh, the answer is so far has been that, well, there's probably some low levels of uh, CBD in that leaf-like structure, and it probably would not remove very well with the harvest aid. So I'm going to pull off one of these, and, and Patrick, if you can just hold that for a moment. And if I can do this right, there's like a green husk around the seed. So I, I've, I've started to remove the green husk around here, and you can see some brown, kind of some dark color, brown color underneath. So that would be the exterior of the actual seed. So let me take the rest of this husk off. Well, this one worked pretty easy. And so there is one hemp seed. Okay, actually, all right, what I have here now is, is that's kind of like the shell. That's kind of like the, the shell portion of a sunflower seed, except this is hemp. And I can tell that that's hollow, and so I've gotten that off from around the actual meat or the seed inside. and. Uh, uh, that's the other half, and so this portion right here is the actual seed from that individual hemp that we took apart. And it blows around, and it looks to me like I would have to say that this probably was not a mature seed yet. So the different floral structures, again, we've got a, we've got a big concentration here. Uh, many people comment and this is the plant earlier that we were working on and we have some branches that broke off but a lot of these plants that you see across here really look like small Christmas trees and there are floral structures all the way from the top all the way down this plant here are branches that come out from just about uh, looks like about three inches above the ground the, this is a plant uh, uh, a stem that's from about three inches off the the ground and you can see that this stamp is loaded, uh, stem is loaded with floral structures. And so uh, normally what happens is it begins to flower and the stem continues to grow out. So, so what you would find on this plant, this, this floral structure here would be more mature than the one out here at the tip. Uh, but again, uh, as I hold this here and, and look in the sunlight, I can see a little bit of glistening in there. Uh, there's structures here uh, on these floral, uh, floral parts called trichomes and they produce uh, the CBD and they have that sticky appearance. We see some hemp plants that are grown for CBD that can be taller than I am. Uh, some of the uh, hemp plants that are grown for fiber can be 10 or 12 feet tall and uh, I'm not sure yet in Texas uh, as we would have fiber production how we will handle that. Uh, I don't have the opportunity here in the fall of 2019 to see any fiber harvest. There's none of that going on in New Mexico or Colorado. Uh, so we hope to learn a little bit more about the, the harvesting for how they separate this. There are different strategies for, for harvest. Uh, this particular field, they basically, they basically are pulling the plants out by hand and they're removing them in a trailer to a shed where they're put out to dry uh, because the market for CBD pays a, a fixed price for each 1% of CBD in dried floral structures. And I think that's uh, the, the percentages of CBD that are the, if you do a hand harvest, where you would take this plant in uh, to uh, a drying facility, then it just depends on how much effort you want to put into this. But you could remove these structures by hand, uh, and so that you would, this, well, there's some more fiber there. So this is, this is what you would probably sell. I assume it probably would have the leaves with it. Uh, and so at least in that case, then you're getting rid of, getting rid of the stemmy material. And so, uh, again, this is gonna come back to, to how much effort you put into this. There are some farmers uh, 
that will have a mechanical harvest. I think in, in, the, in the long term we're going to see that there will be a lot of mechanical harvest for CBD. The, what's harvested off the plant will not be as high in percentage because you're going to have other parts harvested in there like stem and so forth that will pull your concentration down. But uh, some farmers in Colorado believe that you can get in the range of about 9 to maybe 9.5% CBD uh, with mechanical harvest. That might represent more of what we call a top crop where we would harvest the top of the plant off knowing that maybe it's not feasible uh, to, to try to get uh, the rest of these structures at the bottom. But, so when we talk about hemp fiber, what I'd like to do is show you uh, the parts of an uh, industrial hemp plant that, that uh, gives you an example of what we had here. What we've got right here is there's two different plants here. Again, I think they, they are probably different varieties. They were not supposed to be in the field. But on a hemp plant, if you, you have what you have here is you've got uh, different branches. This one here is just has a leaf on it. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to peel off one of these branches and show you an example of what is the bast fiber, kind of like from the barky material. So as I begin to pull this off, let me get my foot here and get the rest of this out of the way, you notice the stringy material that's coming out off the plant that's going down the stem. So I'll just continue to pull that down. It's come to another branch. Uh, I got past it a little bit and it's on down. So now what I have here is I've got some stringy material. This is an example of the bass fibers. Uh, and the process to remove this is, is a little more complicated. They talk about uh, the material decortication helps get the pithy material out. But this material here is what is uh, probably the more sought after fiber material that hemp has a name for. Very strong, high tensile strength. Okay. So here's a, another example. Uh, just to the, the fibrous material that's on the exterior of the stalks and stems in a hemp plant. So uh, if you, you could do the same thing with a cotton plant and you will also get uh, a, a long stringy material like this on the exterior. I don't understand yet completely how uh, all of this is processed, how they separate that out, but for bast fibers what they like is to have long pieces that could be uh, potentially a foot or two feet long. Maybe gives you an example here as I've cut that stalk on a on a, an angle there you see there's in the middle there looks like there's some pithy material. Uh, I guess uh, what what other words it's it's kind of soft material it's, it's like the core of that stalk and let's see if we can get this uh, pared down to where we can have some of the the core of this material left and show you an example of what the herd fibers would look like. I think we're going to get this done. This is not the perfect example that I have pictures of. Uh, this, let's try this again. Well, the first time doing it myself it didn't work so well, but what you can see here, let's put this against my jeans, you can see there's some some soft fibrous type material here in the center uh, and that would be part of, of the, uh, the herd fiber. Examples that sometimes you can actually have a very distinct uh, little tube or rod of pith material uh, which would be herd and so that would be very desirable. And we might find that in some of these larger plants here that have developed more because this is a fairly young plant that we looked at.